Sometimes in what we're told, we have to try to crack the reporting code. And one of the things that strikes me is officially, White House officials are saying, no comment, not go away. No comment. No comment. Uh, yeah. Can't confirm or deny. And, you know, this is something our White House correspondent, Ed Henry, was hearing back uh, in early September. He was getting a whiff of this. He was waved away from it. I was waved away from it. It's very clear that this White House has been doing an internal review led by the current chief of staff, Pete Rouse, about what they need to do heading into a new Congress with a new political reality. And the political reality, as you pointed out, is a divided Congress. And uh, Bill Daley is somebody who really knows how to reach out to Republicans. We saw that when he passed NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, when Bill Clinton was there. And I bet they're going to, you know, that's one reason that he's attractive to them. Roland Martin, you know the Daly family, you know Bill Daly, and you know how he is a very tough guy when it comes to negotiations mm -hmm. and politics. He's done that in the business community. He's done that in politics. Yet, unlike probably anyone in a senior role in this White House, he does have a pretty good relationship with Republicans dating back to the Commerce Secretary days, and he gets along very well with the business community, which has complained for months and months and months about this White House. But beyond his Commerce Secretary role, he was a hiring executive with Southwestern Bell. Uh, and so that is also critical. Somebody who has been in the position of working in the private sector, having to deal uh, in terms of with various uh, corporate executives as well. It's different when you're on the political side talking to corporate folks. When you're one of those corporate folks is saying, look, I understand when it comes to job creation, I understand what we have to do to get the economy moving. That also is important. But also, he brings experience, I think, is it also important as a cabinet secretary. One of the criticisms of this administration, how have they not been using utilizing the broader cabinet as opposed to the officials just around the president, he also brings that in as well. Uh, let, let, let's be clear. We don't know that this is a done deal. We are getting indications he's being seriously considered, that the president had to make this decision on his Hawaii vacation. So we'll watch this as this comes out. John and Eric, I want you to come into the conversation. But first, I just want to show our viewers a little bit more about who is Bill Daly, if they don't remember, from the Clinton administration. He's 62 years old. He's been executive at J.P. Morgan and Chase Company from 2004 to the present. As Roland noted, president of SBC Communications back in 2001 to 2004, the chairman of the Gore for President campaign and the Secretary of Commerce back in the late 1990s. John Avalon, one of the criticisms, perhaps, if he does come in, is that I can see liberals saying, oh my God, Wall Street, Wall Street, Wall yeah. Street, Wall Street. <laughs> oh yeah, and you can already anticipate the criticism on the right too, which is Chicago, 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 Chicago. Look, politics is perception. On the plus side of the ledger is everything that's been said, business experience, Clinton uh, administration experience, uh, and, that, and that this is a guy who helped pass NAFTA. Got a lot of credibility with the business community. That's huge in terms of addressing an unmet need in the Obama administration. But it doubles down. It doesn't even double down. It quadruples down on Chicago. And that is going to draw a lot of screams of anger, frustration about the insularity of the White House, which has also been under attack today. And yet, Eric Erickson, would you consider it a positive development if the president brought into the White House a business executive, some who has worked on major trade deals. The Republicans say that's one of the areas they hope to work with the president in this new environment here in Washington. And someone who has had some, I'm sure there are some Republicans out there about to email me, hell no, uh, but who has over, had over the years pretty good relationships and a relationship level of trust with Republicans. Right. You know, when, when the story came out this afternoon, I talked to a lot of Republicans. None of them had anything critical to say of Bill Daley. They, they all kind of had the slap on the forehead, said this would be a great pick. It keeps the president the in his comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it keeps the president in his comfort zone of having someone from Chicago, which to, to the people I've been talking to, it says, you know, this is a president who has trouble reaching out to Republicans. So he's got the Bill Daley comfort zone there. And Bill Daley, the Republicans like him, so he can reach out. It's a good pick. Can I just uh, say uh, Frankly, I, I would say, r real quick, Gloria, that some of the Republicans I've said talked to said this is a little bit troubling in that the president really does want to win re-election. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but financial reform right. is clearly a key issue here right. because J.P. Morgan was uh, not lobbying in favor of financial reform, right. shall we say. So Bill Daley is on the record against a, a very significant initiative from this administration. Achievement, people yeah. in the White right. House right. would well, say. Right. Also, this whole notion of how will the left respond. Right. He is is not coming from a conservative political family. I mean, this is somebody <laughs> right, who, I mean, right, his right. brother is a, was a right. huge gun right. rights advocate. Right. So it's not like he's not, the Daley family right. is not beloved by the left. They're not the left. And let, let's, let's look a little bit at the current lineup at the White House in the sense that Pete Rouse is the current chief of staff. He was the deputy chief of staff, and he took this job when Rahm Emanuel went back to Chicago. Pete Rouse became the chief of staff, and I'm told he is among those saying, maybe I shouldn't keep this job. Maybe you need somebody more high profile. Robert Gibbs is the press secretary, but there's a lot of talk that Robert will slide over into David Axelrod's job as a senior advisor. David is right now the 
the president's top political advisor, but he's leaving. He's going back to Chicago to set up shop for the reelection campaign. And so one of the theories to bring in a Bill Daley is that you would have an experienced grown-up to be in the White House, a chief executive, a CEO, a guy who's been in this business before and has deep experience. When the president's out running around the country, right. yeah. one thing you want is someone you trust minding the this store. This is different than the Clinton administration where you had lots of young folks who didn't quite understand Washington, D.C. This is somebody who has significant experience. And again, I think when you put all the pieces together, this is different than Leon Panetta coming in uh, when Bill Clinton was, uh, was in the White House. Does it tell us that initially after the election, a lot of people said, no, 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 Pete's staying, Pete's staying, Pete's staying, meaning Pete Rouse. Does it tell us that they've had a moment of reflection to make them think this is a new environment, both yeah. both Republican control of the House and the idea that he's going to have to start gearing up for re-election? Yeah, and that maybe yeah. is, you know, Pete Rouse is the ultimate inside man. He's the insider's insider who makes everything work at the White House. And what it tells you is that they're thinking that they need an outside man as they head into the 2012 election, replacing, by the way, Rahm Emanuel, who was both an insider and knew, knew how to play the outside game and go on, uh, go on television, for example. Bill Daly knows how to do this right. job. It's kind of weird calling any of these folks outsiders. Right. But, uh, <laughs> he would be a new insider. Right, right, right. Well, yeah. you know, a DC it also outsider. addresses the Republican concern that, that they, right. there are still a lot of Republicans out there who feel like the White House hasn't been doing as much outreach as they had anticipated. And, and Bill Daly is a guy that is in everybody's comfort zone. Well, and, and, but the, look, the, lame duck, the story of the lame duck was outreach. And Eric, to your earlier point, if Republicans are saying that this is A, a good pick, B, it shows how serious the president is not only about recognizing the results of the last election but pivoting towards reelect, that means it's a, it's a very strong pick.